And what's happening, y'all? Coach Holloway back with you again. So today what I want to do is a film study of Falcons rookie quarterback Desmond Ritter in his first game versus the hated New Orleans Saints. Um, so we had been, as Falcons fans, we had been asking to see him all year because Mariota wasn't performing to what we wanted to. And uh, he finally got his chance in this game. So uh, I think Arthur Smith rolled out a conservative game plan, just enough for him to get comfortable. So mainly runs, and then the passes were screens, play action rollouts, and then some simple uh, passing concepts with easy reads. So it was something that he could handle at his speed. Um, so what I wanted to see out of him was his um, composure, uh, his ability to make right decisions, uh, the correct decisions down the field as far as reading the defense, and hitting the open man. I wanted to see his throwing mechanics and his body, how he uses his body to be able to propel the, the ball down the field. So that's hips, thighs, core, uh, shoulders, uh, torso, all that to be able to propel the ball down the field. Um, I also wanted to see how he was able to uh, manage the game plan and to be able to keep things going smoothly. Down to that part, I can say that it went well because I didn't see too many bad mistakes, although a few things that I think he needed to improve on. The first play of the game was a straight drop back, which I was surprised by. I thought they'd go play action first. Defense is in a cover one, and the rest of the routes ain't important, but that goal on the top of the screen, it is. Watch him freeze the safety here with his eyes. This is important. This is something a lot of the young quarterbacks don't know how to do. Then he turns his eyes back over to look at the goal route. He's already freed up enough space for his guy to get a one-on-one. -on -one. Unfortunately, it's a really good cornerback on him, Alante Taylor, that uh, breaks up the play. Technically, Taylor did a Darrell Revis and ran Patterson out of bounds, which is a good play if you got the leverage for it. Now here we go with a view from the pocket. Drops back, eyes on the safety, eyes on the goal, and then follows through. And then a little bit later, we're going to talk about his body mechanics. This here is the second play of the game. And I'm debating whether or not I want to criticize this because it's up to interpretation, but I let it play. The only person open on this play was uh, tight end Anthony Furster, who was about to come open right here. But Ritter doesn't see him. He scrambles out, good escape, and ends up throwing an incompletion down here. Back in the pocket now. Take a look at Cam Jordan on the left side of the screen. He important in this play. So he takes off, gets chipped, and then right here at this point, I felt that Ritter had enough time, enough room to be able to look downfield to make a play. But uh, some people may feel differently. The one thing I will say is when you notice when he gets off the block, it's as Ritter's going forward. If Ritter stays in there, maybe he doesn't take that angle and uh, McGarry can stay in front of the play. But either way, I'm happy that they avoided the sack and at least got incompletion. I also wanted to highlight his lower body strength, especially on this escape on this sack right here. I think as a scrambler, that's got to be a great asset to have. And by that, I mean strong core, strong hips, strong thighs, be able to break them arm tackles and stay up in the pocket or to escape. And so here, I just wanted to show you his first completion. Um, it wasn't really all that special. It was a tight end screen. It wasn't even that well blocked. The whole left side of the line I was disappointed in. Well, at least from the center, uh, Drew Dahlman and then Elijah Wilkinson, the guard. But I see Ajay out there getting out there. That's good. I'm showing this because these are kind of safe plays that you'll see throughout the game. Screens, play action rollouts, stuff like that. This is Ritter's first completion to Drake London, a connection you would see throughout the course of the game. The play here is called a levels concept. It's where you have a bunch of in-breaking routes going to different levels of the field, short, medium, and deep. So in this case, you're reading this linebacker, number 55, I believe, Caden Ellis. Wherever he goes, wherever he drops into his zone, uh, Ritter's going to throw to the opposite of that meaning he will throw to wherever the defender is not, in plain terms. In this case, Ellis drops to his deep right, which means he covers Anthony Furcture where the X is, and Drake London is open for the slant down at the bottom. So as you see, great release, great footwork by Drake, way to go aggressive with the hands and attack the ball. That's what I love about him is the fact that he's very aggressive with his hands. His right work is actually improving as well. And I also want to highlight some of Ritter's mechanics from the pocket on this a slant route. I personally like his mechanics when it comes to short throws because it's all a quick motion, all internal to the body. As you can see, he plants, he uses his hips, turns through, rotates the arm through. Not a lot of backswing on it and then none needed for a short pass like that.
So this play is very similar to the previous one, but I want to show you an example where he kind of locks into a receiver. So this, again, is another levels concept, this time coming out of trips left. So this is actually defended pretty well. And you check out the X on Drake London because he is thrown to, even though he's not open, DeMar Davis has good coverage on him. But Ritter, like I said, had a connection with him, so he just forced it in there anyway. Good reception, good aggressive catch, like I said before, going up strong with his hands. But like I said, uh, Ritter starting to lock in, and you can even see right here, watch his eyes. All right, he's looking right at London the whole time. Still able to get the reception, good, but, you know, that's something that uh, better defenses might pick on. One of the biggest hits on Ritter coming out of college was on his accuracy. And there was some of that in this game, some issues there. But on this throw, I want to show you an example of great ball placement. And now London gets credit for the one-handed grab, but I want you all to see what the throw is. Look at that window. Look at that placement. You can ask for a more perfect pass. Great one-hand catch. Great finish. Hopefully, this is something that we can see him improve on and do more of in the future. Even better, the fact that the throw was on the run. As I said before, he was locked into London a lot, and so that can have some bad consequences. So right here, you have a play-action rollout, and you see Alante Taylor, the cornerback for the New Orleans Saints, make a great play. London's running an over route here while Alante Taylor's in a deep third zone. But as he sees that it's a play-action rollout, he then rolls over to the side it's going. He breaks off his zone and goes over with the receiver. So what he does here, he has great makeup speed and is able to get through and almost come up with the pick. So he juggled it out of bounds and this replay took the pick away from him, but it was a hell of a play still. Yet another example of Ritter locking in on London and also another great play by Alante Taylor. The defense is in quarters coverage where all four DBs are going to drop in the zone and you got London running a deep end or a dig. Now, the rules for zone coverage for defensive backs is if the receiver that they're over is going past 10 or 15 yards, Depending on the coordinator, then you stay with him. It goes from zone to man. Now, watch him go from zone into man. He gets on the receiver, breaks up the pass. I mean, I hate to give a Saint credit, man, but it, this is just perfect right here. Go from zone, watch him lock on, watch him get hands on, and break up the pass. Even with a hated rival, I got to give credit where it's due, man. That's a hell of a play. Hell of a player, too. Now, this here was the longest pass of the game, and it came towards the end where the Falcons were trying to come back. And I only want to show this to show you basically um, the mechanics of him trying to drive a ball deeper downfield. So I'm going to let it go out and play right now. It's a 14, 15-yard completion to Michael Pruitt to tie it in, and that's about it. What I noticed since the first play of the game is that his mechanics are the same no matter where he's throwing deep or short, middle, doesn't matter. And if you take a look back here, uh, he likes to keep his mechanics within the interior of his body, within his plane. So you see a step, a small step, a small turn of the hips, and a small arm motion with very little backswing, and he still gets it there. This was the Falcons' last offensive play of the game. It's fourth down. They're down 21-18, so they need this first down to keep the game alive. So this was a must-needed throw. And so they run a levels concept again with Drake London running the deep end, and I'm shocked that the Saints didn't do nothing to prepare for it. So the middle of the field, deep middle is wide open, and Drake gets it, but he fumbles and uh, Saints get it. Game pretty much over from that point. They're able to run out the clock to win. And as you can see in the view from the pocket, Ritter made no qualms about where he was going with the ball. See, he's staring down the receiver right here, right to the spot where Drake London going to be. And he delivers just a strike here. Watch the power, watch the hip rotation. It's like a fast pitch in baseball. I just wish Drake would have held on to that. So, as you can see, it was a mixed bag. Um, Ritter did the best that he could with the game plan that he had, and I think the coaching staff put that in place because, you know, like I said, this is the first time with NFL speed. Um, but what from what I saw, I think he is the type of person that I think could manage the game. There are some spots that I think he needs to work on for, like, him um, locking in the receivers, staring down receivers. Especially Drake London. I mean, if people know that's who you're going to throw to, then they're going to shift their coverage that way. So um, not doing that, learning how to use his eyes all over the field, uh, learning uh, pocket presence, even though for the most part it was pretty good. There was just a few plays here and there that uh, I didn't like. But overall, uh, he, it, it was a regular rookie uh, game to me. I mean, I think we've been spoiled as Falcons fans because the last two rookie QBs we had ended up being great. 
end up being near Hall of Famers. So I guess we're used to that kind of uh, expert level uh, rookie, but that's not what we have here. So uh, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not going to do this crystal ball and try to predict that this man's future. All I see is if the coaching staff does it right and uh, brings him along slowly, I think he can be at least a good game manager and, shoot, maybe more than that. You never know. Uh, but anyway, so that's my take on it. So I appreciate y'all for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, help get my viewership up. And uh, I appreciate y'all. Everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Peace.